My people, welcome back to your favorite show, your favorite host, You and I Talk Show with Luis Uachu. Today on the show, children's books, my people. I mean, does it get better than that? Welcome. People, welcome to the show. This week on the You and I show, we have Brandy Bublé, children's author. Wow, welcome. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, it's such a pleasure. And your beautiful books, you know, we could just start by talking just about the cover. I know, aren't they great? They are so beautiful. I know, so bright and yeah. fun. Yeah, so let's start by talking about the Oshi, the octopus. Like, first of all, um, your childhood, I, I read that you were inspired by your vacations with your family. They used to take you out on a boat. Yeah, my father was a commercial fisherman and still is. So, Still, still is. is? Yes, and not as much as he was. But my grandfather, my great-grandfather, my uncle, my brother was on that boat. Our whole family is a family of fishermen. So I love the ocean. I still do. We have a boat now. Um, so, yeah, the ocean inspires me daily. I love everything about it. And so... Um, that's kind of where this came from, but also O'Shea is my son's name, so oh. my children are my biggest. So you used to go out there when you were a child yeah. and, and see all kinds of things? Absolutely. We'd go out on my dad's fishing boat. We'd meet up with him. We'd take the ferry with my mom and my brother and my sister. We'd meet up because we wouldn't see him for months at a time. He'd be gone from, like, usually May, June, and wouldn't come back till October. Wow. And this is on the West Coast? Yes, this the salmon right. fishing. Yes, and he'd go all the way up to almost Alaska, so... So yeah, we would go visit him and it was my favorite thing. I didn't care if I was going on a ferry boat or my father's fishing boat. I loved being on the ocean. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the first one, O'Shea the octopus. Yes, so, O'Shea. O'Shea. Yeah. Which language is that? Oh, it's actually, uh, a lot of people think we're Irish, mm -hmm. but my husband is also my high school sweetheart. And so in grade nine, he was, and still is, a big Ice Cube fan. Ice Cube, yes, the rapper? Ice, yes, and really? Ice Cube's real name is O'Shea Jackson. No way. And so in our <laughs> love notes from grade nine, uh -huh. we wrote that when we had kids, we would name them O'Shea and Jade, and we did. Does Ice Cube know about this? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he makes children's uh, fun movies. Oh, yeah, my kids love his movies. Oh, and so that's what, the, the one that, that's uh, O'Shea, he knows that. Oh, he knows, and, then he, and he's pretty proud. And O'Shea's... Or, well, Ice Cube's son's name is actually O'Shea as well. No. So which yeah. one? The one that played that just in, did uh, him. In, did just uh, played him in the uh, Straight Outta Compton. Straight Outta Compton. Yes. <laughs> Get out of here. So we spelt it on purpose. Uh -huh. O apostrophe S H A E rather than E A, which is very Irish uh -huh. because we're Italian. So. so this is A E. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay. So that's the Ice Cube version. Yes. And we always thought we'd call him Shay, uh -huh. but we've never called him Shay. <laughs> if anything, everybody calls him Osh for uh -huh, short. Uh -huh. yeah. So did you grow up on that music? And this oh my like gosh, it? we love every kind of music, my uh -huh. husband and I. Uh -huh. Rap, uh -huh. old school, like the standards, like my brother and my grandfather nice. love, and you name it, we've, we've, we play it. But you picked the right rapper, though, because Ice Cube is so brilliant. He is brilliant. <laughs> he is you awesome. The one. Yeah. You picked a really good one. Yeah. So also... Brandy Buble, that's a famous name, Buble. Yeah, that's my brother, Michael. Michael, Michael Buble is, is your brother. Yes. Damn, yeah. talented family. Yeah. Was he on the same boat? He was. He fished from with my father for years. Uh huh. Yeah. So and so, on. how did the music? Like, so you got the uh, children's books out of it. He got the music out of it. Well, and then there's my little sister, Crystal, who was an actress. And now she teaches acting. Mm -hmm. And she, at one point in time, was the one that everybody knew. She was the famous Buble. No way. Yes, it's quite funny. <laughs> Until Michael was like, <laughs> I'm going to take this name <laughs> yeah. to a whole new level. That's right. Wow. So he actually, Michael actually wrote the foreword for this book as well. And about, because um, O'Shea's got ten arms instead of eight. And so it's about embracing what sets us apart and what makes us different. Mm -hmm. And so Michael writes at the beginning about how listening to the old music wasn't maybe the coolest thing he thought in the 90s, but it turns out that they have a lot in common because it makes you special. What makes you different makes you special. Wow, this is so beautiful. I mean, a whole family of so much talent. 
I don't know. My mom always says, I don't know what I ate because she says, I didn't get any talent, but my kids have it. <laughs> Oh, no. Maybe it's not hereditary, you know? <laughs> <I> know. <laughs> but is your father disappointed that nobody picked up fishing? Ah, uh, you know what? No, I think he loves that. We didn't pick up fishing for my dad, but my dad is one of the kindest, most respected men you've ever met in your life. And if I take some of that from him, mm -hmm. it's better than the fishing for sure. Nice. So, so what about your second son? Because you have two. Right? I have a son, O'Shea, uh -huh. and I have a daughter, Jade. And that's Jade the Japer. Oh, Jake, I thought. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is so cute, so sweet. So, you know, you're just not going to feel left out. Well, and it's funny because when O'Shea was coming out, mm -hmm. she was only about, she's 11 now. Uh -huh. And when we were in the talks and works of it, she was only about eight, nine. And she was very jealous. Yeah. Oh, O'Shea, O'Shea. It's always about <laughs> O'Shea. And so when we had um, almost completed editing of O'Shea, uh -huh. My editor had come to us and said that they would really like it to be a series. Uh -huh. So let's make it into more than one book, mm -hmm. um, which I did. I called it, they're called One of a Kind. Mm -hmm. So these are called the One of a Kind series because each of the animals have something that makes them different but awesome. Uh -huh. So, you know, it was, seemed a perfect name for it. And uh, they said you can either do O'Shea in another adventure and do it like that or do another animal. And I knew, I was like, no, 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 I have to do a jade yeah. because my daughter will have a heart attack. <laughs> So, and no. I call her um, my jaybird, uh -huh. my singing bird. I even have a tattoo for her because she sings like a little bird all the time. Oh. So that's why this little singing bird is inspired by my daughter. Okay, we'll take a break and come back and keep talking about it. You and I talk show with Louise Wachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at wachu.com to be a guest on the show. Welcome back, my people. We're still talking to Brandy Buble. Thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. So how long does it take you to write the story? And then what is the whole procedure? Because you have such beautiful pictures. Thank you. Who do you choose? Where do you find these people? And then how's the whole process? Well, so. I started writing, I, I, I was a teacher of special needs kids for years, for about nine years. And that's where the writing started. I started writing stories for them. Everything, every lesson I changed for them was always in rhyme, well, as much as I could, because it makes it fun. There's a melody to it, there's a rhythm to it, and I love that, that's why I, every story I've ever written is in rhyme. So I have about 15 stories that I've written now. And O'Shea was the first one they decided to go with the publishers. But before that, 10 years prior, I had been picked up from another publishing company. And um, it wasn't the greatest fit. It didn't work. It was exciting. And I was so proud and excited to be finally out there and published. But they didn't see Rhyme as the number one seller as a way to go. They wanted it. And we didn't do O'Shea. It was called Freckles the Frog. And they wanted the same story, the same characters, just put into a standard 32-page uh -huh, storybook. Uh -huh, no rhyme. Uh -huh. And I tried. But that changes everything. You know, I was devastated. I mean, if you're about rhyming and somebody tells you, give, give it to me normal, you, you know would be what? Like... I was devastated. And I was embarrassed. And I felt <laughs> hurt. And I thought, oh my gosh, OK, so it's not good enough. And I, <laughs> I, that's how all my stories are written. And that's what I love. Yeah. But I remember the meeting I had with them. and. Uh, my brother was there because his manager, Bruce Allen, is also my manager. And um, so we had this meeting, and I knew something was up, and they said, we just don't want the rhyming. We think it's beautiful, but we don't want the rhyming. And I was crushed. Wow. Crushed. That is the essence and of, of you. Exactly. That is and what I, you want to bring out. I was heartbroken, and I thought, that's the way I do it. But we took a break, and Bruce said to me, it's up to you. Uh -huh. what you whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. if you want to keep going, great, let's try. And if you don't, then that's great too. And I looked to my brother, because I look up to him a lot, and I just said to him, like, what do I do, Mike? And I'm like, <laughs> like literally bawling. <laughs> and he said, you know what, Bren? He said, it, it's up to you. I can't make that call. But at the beginning of my career, I didn't have all the creative control I have now. Sometimes you have to kind of give and take, and then you get your foot in the door, and then you can make the choices. So maybe it depends how bad you want this out right now. So I said, oh, bad. Okay, let's do this. And there's parts of me that wished I didn't try to follow through, but everything happens for a reason. Whatever God's plan is, it is, so I did. And 
it just didn't work. Mm. Uh, it, there was a something out of our control that had nothing to do with the book mm -hmm. that they said, you know what, it's not going to work right now. We can either hold it or we can part ways. And I thought, no, this is a sign. Thank yeah. you so much for everything. They were great. <laughs> Let's part. So we did. Yeah. And so now I've got these great uh, local yeah. publishers. They're called Simply Red Publishing. Uh -huh. They're right out of downtown, well, Caresdale, Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And they're spectacular. They never, ever once asked me to change anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to give up an ounce of creative yeah. control. I think it would have been so difficult to promote something. You that know, I didn't because love. when you're promoting yeah. something, you really have to put your energy into it, yeah. right? So And you want to be passionate. And yeah. I'm passionate. And I love this. Yeah. I love, it makes me proud. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. But when I was trying that first time. But you know, it's a learning curve. Yeah. It got me to where I am and now I've got two great books that I adore out there. I think it's also a huge uh, lesson for the artist. Yeah. Like you feel so much better when it's something that you really, yes. you know, that it's you and yeah. you really want to put and it And didn't out there. compromise what I, well, I kind of did at the beginning to try, but yeah. at the end I didn't. I, yeah. I just said, no, it's gonna, nice. it's not gonna be that way. So what about the illustration? It's so beautiful. beautiful? I mean, you know. Her name is Aliska Liska. Mm -hmm. and, and it's uh, Liska what? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Brandy Buble and Aliska Liska. Yeah, she's from um, Vancouver Island, uh -huh. and she's a freelance artist. And um, my publishers asked what I saw, what what kind of images I I wanted for our book. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if you know this, I didn't know this. Ninety percent of all authors and illustrators will never ever meet. I've still never met her. Wow. I guess they want to keep it for like separate, separate. so that. Because of course they're my words. I have images in my head. And yeah. She's the artist. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you don't want that crossing. Yeah. yeah. So um, I told them that I wanted funky. I wanted it vibrant, saturated color. I wanted, I wanted a fun feel to mm -hmm. go with that rhyme, uh -huh. um, and really bright. And she nailed it. So does she send you sketches? Does she send it's all you all through the drops? publisher? So we oh. sat together when the first illustrations of O'Shea were coming in. Mm -hmm. I was. So scared, like beyond scared. So first you write it, yep, and then you take it to your publisher, and then the images come after the. Yes, writing. so we edit it, uh -huh. and then while we're editing, uh -huh. they've now approached the illustrators. They think will work from what I've described. Uh -huh. They gave me a lot of creative control, really, through the whole process. Nice. And so, um, yeah, I was so nervous for that first meeting to sit down and look at the sketches. I said to my husband, what if I hate them? Yeah. Like really, what yeah, if I Yeah, what if, them? you know? And like watercolors are beautiful, but I don't want watercolors for my picture. I want it to be a punch. Like I want that. So I got there, so scared. They laid out five or six images of O'Shea, all different variations. And right away, I was in love. They were exactly what I wanted. So I had a little choices in some of them. I had longer legs, shorter legs, different colors. There was a purple octopus, a green. But um, I was, and then I got to see other images and I was, again, I'm a crier. Yeah. Bawling with <laughs> happiness because I couldn't believe how well she did it. I guess, you know, you've kept the child alive in you. Is this because, um, is this what you need to be a children's writer, you know? I, you gotta have that it's childish part of yeah. you. Yeah, because you have to have alive, that imag imagination, you know? right? And yeah. see things from, like, I'm the fun mom. You I, know, my kids are 13 and 11, and their their friends still they want to hang with me. Which really? Is crazy. They're not like. <laughs> well, they probably make fun of me, <laughs> but I think I'm pretty cool still. Nice, <laughs> nice. So, where are you hoping that this is gonna go? You know, when I started it, a little girl asked me the other day at an event I was at if. I always dreamed about writing, and I didn't. I dreamed no. of, nope, it was not even in my radar when I was a little girl. Uh -huh. I wanted to be married, uh -huh. I wanted to be a mother, uh -huh. I wanted to be a teacher. Yeah. That was my thing when I was uh -huh. little. You're teaching though. And well, and I did get to be a teacher. I taught special needs kids for nine great years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, I got to be a mother, mm -hmm. and it's through the children I worked with and my own children that these books were born. And that's how this all came about. And it was a very organic flow. It wasn't forced, it just happened. Wow. So it's very cool. All right, we'll take a short break and come back and keep talking about this. You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uwachu.com to be a guest on the show. Welcome back, my people. This is so beautiful, so interesting. Children. So, how old were your children when you published this? And how old 
are you writing for? Like your audience, how old do they have to be? I'm your audience too, so I don't know if you're gonna well, you go know, all the way to 50. Well, and all the time, people always ask me, how, how what's the age for this? Yeah. And I'm always thinking like, I guess in, in, in when you go online and you look up at Amazon or at chapters, I think it says four to nine or mm -hmm. four to eight. Mm -hmm. But for me, books are from birth. I mean, I read to my children when they were babies and couldn't even probably understand what I was saying. But yeah. I like, I love a book. I love but you didn't get to read them these stories. Not when they no, were not when they were yeah. little. I didn't. I wrote O'Shea when O'Shea was about two. Uh huh. Uh huh. But to see them published, that only happened in 2014. So, so you're gonna have to have more babies. No, more babies <laughs> to me. but you know what? My sister has two babies. They're five and three. My brother has two. He just had his new son about uh -huh. three and a half weeks ago. Uh -huh. So now he's got two babies. So I get to reread them to them. Nice. Which is great. So, but have you ever read these stories to your children? Absolutely. They're too grown up. No, but you know what? That's the thing. Like somebody asked me before, what's my inspiration? Dr. Seuss. I'm 38. I love reading a Dr. Seuss Reading at 38? I'm 38, yeah. Wow. And I really? love, I you love see, You see, you definitely stayed the, the child in you. <laughs> you keep it alive. It also keeps you young, right? Well, I laugh a lot. I got the laugh lines to prove it. But <laughs> it's all good. But yeah, I think you could read them until, I mean, my son's 13. He still re I, I catch him reading. Yeah. And well, I, think that's a, the thing, I think that's the thing about rhyme, though. Uh -huh. I think rhyme is fun and it's ageless. Yeah. And even though, like the thing that I'm, I'm most proud of with these books is uh, they've got beautiful messages in them. They do, they're about acceptance and believing in yourself. And as a mom, that's huge for me because you're always telling your kids, believe in yourself, you're special, you're beautiful, you're one of a kind. Uh -huh. And they go, uh -huh, yeah, okay, when they're doing, they're growing and they're not growing as fast or they're not as good as at basketball or whatever it may be. And, and I'm always saying, it doesn't matter if you're not as good as your neighbor mm -hmm. at something. Nobody's good at everything, but everybody's good at something. So, you know, since it's rhyming, yes. I'm thinking you may also want to do an audio version, put a little music yeah. on it, and then bring in the rhymes. Are you going to do it, or are you going to, like, hire my voice to do it? There you go. I would love Done. to do it. Oh, Wouldn't that great. be fun? So much. Yeah. But I'm thinking, you know, like, an audio version would be so great, too, because you could Put in a little music. Yeah. And maybe this is where Ice Cube comes in. There you go. <laughs> my husband would be very happy, so would my son. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. You and Ice Cube together doing it. That would be awesome. But you're thinking about it? You know, I never thought about it, but I mean, it's a great idea. Because, because... audio books are popular too, right? Yes. And then you can play them in your car. You can play them at home. And it kind of expands um, the product. For sure. Gives the people more options. For sure. Hey, I'm open to lots of different things. And then so how about animation? I, We've I talked see about animation that. animation about it. We've talked about animation. We've talked about apps. So there's some stuff in the works too with that. Who knows? Um, yeah, the kids were brainstorming on what kind of games they'd like to play. My mm -hmm. kids, are they love games. Mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't, right? At this generation, our children love them. So, yeah. Who knows what will happen? Nice. So the O'Shea came out in 2014, yep. and then the Jade the Bird came out in 2015. Yeah, so just in November, Jade was released. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking you have something cooking well, for 2016. I have mm -hmm. two others that I wrote for the series. Um, whether we get them out there or not, because I've got other projects in the works too, I'm not sure, but they are there to be edited if we do. We're kind of trying to take it slow because this was crazy doing it so fast. Two, one, I was not even finished editing this one. I had written Jade. Yeah. So it was intense. Back to back. So uh, the edits have not been worked on. It's a skeleton of both stories, but they're pretty cute. I've got um, one for my, my sister's little girl, Ella the Elephant, and one for my brother's little boy, Noah the Newt. Wow. So if that comes to be, there'll be four in the collection. Yeah, it'll be very cool. So, and then there's this other thing too. You're a mother. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so busy, and a lot of people always talk about how mothers don't have time to do things for themselves. It's Where crazy. did you find the time and the space? Uh, you already a mother, and yes. then, you know, to be able to write. Well, I'm I'm lucky because my kids were older when I started. Okay. So they were at school. Mm -hmm. So during school was a great time, and I have the best husband the best sister, the best brother, the best parents, so much support. So if there was ever a time I was stressed out and I needed to write or needed, needed to get to edits and meetings, everybody came on board and helped, which was great. I'm lucky to have that support system. So that makes it yeah. a lot. That makes it doable. So you have no drama in your family, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what do you 
I'm a normal family. Like, what is We're this? very normal, crazy, but normal. Aha. Uh -huh. It's nuts. I mean, you always think, I mean, but you are, you are all in show business, though. Kind of. Uh huh. I mean, it's funny, yesterday, or not yesterday, on Wednesday, I did um, the Hookie Day, Acceptance Day at the Giants, Vancouver Giants. And it's a great thing. It's, it's all about um, bringing acceptance to our kids about anti bullying and race and um, sexual preference, whatever it may be. It's, it's just acceptance altogether. And I got to read Jade the Jaybird. Last year they had me read O'Shea, and this year was Jade the Jaybird. And the lineup of the kids, because it's all the schools, there's 50 schools there. They get to play hooky, so there's a 12 o'clock game. They were lined up for like 45 minutes to get my autograph. Now I laughed and I said, you kids are gonna go home and go, who is this again? They were just so into the moment because they were going to all the hockey players and getting signatures and they, can you sign my shirt? Can you sign? I was like, you guys, you don't even know who I, you're gonna forget who I am when you leave here today. <sighs> but then they, of course, they know I'm Michael's sister. So they're like, oh. <laughs> like, if it was Michael, I get it. But really, do you really want my autograph? They're like, yeah. Okay. I think they really do want your <laughs> autograph cute, because though. at the end of the day, you know, your work speaks for itself, right? Well, the kids loved it, which was nice. Like, so many kids came up and said it's really inspirational because, like, Jade the Jaybird, um, there's no bullying in Jade the Jaybird. So, O'Shea the Octopus is about a, a ten armed octopus who's obviously different. He has two more legs. And um, he's confident, he loves himself, but then he gets um, harassed by two bullies Mean Mike the Manta Ray and Jade the Jaybird. Or no, Jade the Jaybird, oh gosh. Me and Mike the Manta Ray and Lanny the Lobster, who happened to be, my brother is Michael. So he's mean Mike, but he's not mean. And Lanny is my brother-in-law. So I incorporate all the names. Okay, we'll take a short break and then you'll tell us a little bit more yeah. secrets. <laughs> you and I talk show with Louise Wachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at watcher.com to be a guest on the show. Welcome back, my people. We have Brandy Buble on the show. And it's so beautiful, it's so fascinating. So who are the, little, the, the people in your life that you put in your characters? Yeah, so um, in O'Shea the Octopus, O'Shea's my son. Uh -huh. And then the two bullies are Mean Mike, my brother, who's not mean, and Lanny the Lobster, my brother-in-law, who is not mean. <laughs> They're in there. And then in Jade the Jaybird, Jade for my daughter, and her best friend, Olivia the Owl. Mm. Olivia is her best friend in real life. Do people ever like read it and then recognize somehow like themselves, you know, like your brother, does, does he go like, that sounds like me. Is that me? Did you write Well, no, because <laughs> he, he was funny because uh -huh. everybody in the office called him Mean Mike after. That was a joke. <laughs> but he was very happy to see his character because, <laughs> where's the camera? This is his character right here. Uh-huh. And you know what he said? Yeah. Yes, I got a six pack. Oh! That's what he was excited about. <laughs> but he had a six pack in the story. Yeah. So. Oh man, it will, I, I think even as an animation, uh, animation series, it will, it will be so great. Maybe he could also do some he, of the he's music. He's got a great voice. He could do a on top of song. the Ice Cube music. He could also use his music. <laughs> That's right. It'd be a great combination. Yeah. So and then, but what about other people? Um, you know, like. What are your parents saying about? Oh, they're very proud. They're very proud for sure. It's cool. It's cool to see this, this come to life, mm -hmm. right? And to me, like, I know we can't fight this age of iPads and iPhones and, you know, computers. That's what they want to do. But books are magic. And, and the kids know that. And, and I love watching kids turn the pages and crease them and wrinkle them and read them over and over and over again. And the feedback has been so good. I've gotten, like on my Instagram, I'm, I'm Brandy Buble, at Brandy Buble for my Instagram, but constantly people are sending pictures and tagging their kids reading my books. That's crazy to me. That's all I ever wanted for it, was to know that little minds like, and bedtime stories, that was my favorite. When I grew up, my dad read his bedtime stories whenever he was home, and then when he wasn't, my mom would. And that is my, big, I guess, dream, if you will, to know that these are being shared at that time and these will become memories for these kids. Yeah. That they'll know and remember when they read these books with their family. So do, before they go to sleep, they hear your voice. Yeah. Do you and feel a sort of heavy responsibility in that role because you're truly impacting young minds and they're going to grow up with it? I don't feel heavy. I just, I'm always trying to, to 
be positive and, and lead by example to my kids and to their friends and everybody I know. So that's why I love what these books stand for, just embracing what makes you different, mm -hmm. you know? I do school visits. Yes. I do tons of school visits and I love it. And I go and I talk to the kids about how, you know, we've got to stop comparing each other because no one's good at everything, but everybody's good at something. So find it and rock it. And I have the kids come up in front of all their peers, and I do groups up to 500. And I have them come up and tell the whole school what their name is and what makes them unique or special or different or wonderful. And it can be, I'm a good big brother, I'm good at math, I have freckles. And to say it out loud to all their peers is so empowering for these little kids because too, too often we start off by saying, we can't, we're not, we don't. So I love what these have put out there. And like with Jade, my daughter has, um, anxiety disorder. She's been diagnosed when she was six and a half. Anxiety disorder and OCD. And so she has to be brave every single day to get over these anxieties, these worried dragons that are constant. And she is. And this, this little bird is brave too. She has a beautiful voice and she just has to be brave enough to save it or to use it to save the forest. And she does. Mm -hmm. And so that's a great message of courage. And this is a great message of, of friendship and acceptance and believing in yourself. So everything that's wrapped up in these two books, it makes me feel proud that I'm spreading that. Oh, well, I'm so proud that you came on the show today. Well, thanks, Thank you yeah. so much. And my people, go check out Oshi the Octopus and JD the Bird. JD the Jaybird. Yeah. JD the, the Jaybird. Yeah. So there's an octopus and a bird. Yeah, I mean, we, got the, we got the ocean and we got the sky. Yes, you have the whole universe covered. Oh, man, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. And where, we, people know where they can find yeah, you. Yeah, brandybuble.com has yes. all my events and all that information. Where to find me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.